All righty, Edge Native. Uh, so this is about almost like cloud native, but adapted to the Edge. And I'm going to go and do that little journey with you over the next 20 minutes or so. So um, just let's jump right into it. So back in 2010, all our compute was on-prem, right? Everything was running on-prem. Why? Because there was no cloud. Then the cloud appeared, and people swiftly moved all their workloads to the cloud, only to find out that for certain things, it's kind of not so great if there is 200 milliseconds between you and the application. Uh, or people found that the cloud is not for free. And that there is a cost not only running the stuff in the cloud. Oh, boy. You should not run WebEx in the background. Um, and um, so people discovered that the cloud is not for free, not only for the compute cost, but also for the bandwidth to transport data to the cloud and back. And um, then there is regulatory concerns. There is security concerns. So we saw the, we, we've seen the pendulum swing back uh, from everything in the cloud to certain things back on premise. But as we swing back the pendulum, one thing that we don't want to lose is what we love about the cloud. And what do we like about the cloud? It's the simplicity of the development model. It's the simplicity of the de deployment model. So those things, please go and preserve them. And don't give me yet another tool chain, yet something brand new to only run the stuff at the edge again. So let's make the cloud, or the, let's make the edge feel like cloud if you're moving back onto the edge. So what does that mean? We need to go and be as easy from a deployment and development perspective if we move back to the edge and abstract away these, these complexities that you're running at the edge, i.e. that you're running on a site that has low bandwidth, limited compute, intermittent connectivity. Let's make sure that this nature of you being distributed mostly disappears from a deployment and development model perspective. What we want to go and preserve is that we are able to go and deploy in seconds, and not like historically where people rolled equipment to be running on-prem, put the hardware there and run. And then finally, if we're starting over and run stuff at the edge, let's not go and build a new tool chain. Uh, I've been part of the team that developed originally the, the container solution for Cisco routers and switches. And what did we do? We built a highly optimized solution to run on routers and switches. Highly optimized, low memory footprint, excellent. But it came with its own tool chain. And everybody said, can you please go run Docker? And can you please go run Kubernetes? Why can't I just go and treat this as yet another cluster? Yeah. This time, we do it right. This time, we do look like a Kubernetes cluster at the edge. We're actually running a Kubernetes cluster at the edge. Which edge? There's many edges, right? So you can start off at the right-hand side, following Linux, uh, um, Linux Foundation Edge taxonomy data centers, very centralized, all the way to sensors at the very far edge. And there's two approaches on how you could go and build an edge solution. The historic approach, that's also what the hyperscalers are doing, is what Gartner calls cloud out, which means you're extending the cloud operational model further and further to the edge. You're treating a customer location like a region, which made People built these things where you put a rack onto the customer site, you run Kubernetes on that, but you remotely control that cluster from the cloud. That means you need decent connectivity, you need a tunnel, everything is kind of cloud operated. What if, well, the connectivity isn't so great? Hmm, then you end up having problems. So there's this other approach where you can say, well, I'm not mandating any imperative control from the cloud but I treat every single edge as its own little entity that self-organizes and only reaches the cloud every now and then in order to understand what it needs to go and do. So the declared or desired state I put into the cloud, and then I just realize it locally, autonomously. And that's the edge-in approach, which is very natural to Cisco, right? Because the router also kind of interfaces with its peers and then understands what it needs to go and do and do that really locally. So where we are focused is on this edge in smart device edge. So little devices, and what do I mean with little? Little is something like this size. This is not a rack, right? So this is more like a small compute element, uh, $1,500, $1,000 uh, that you run with. Where do you put this typically? 
you see this in maybe your favorite copy shop or your favorite retail chain or whatever, or on the shop floor somewhere. And it's typically ingesting something like video, running some local app to count people, look at what happens on the shelf is and what's the inventory like, um, or see whether somebody indeed scans the product he's supposed to scan on automatic self-checkout. Um, so all these little solutions, historically, people built them like piece of hardware, piece of software, totally integrated solution stack. And then, well, the next solution, totally integrated solution stack. Totally integrated solution stack. That works well for one or two. If you have three, four, five applications, five management systems, five different types of hardware, five types, uh, types of different, yeah, you, you hear the story, you've seen that again. And that's something that we want to go and break down and move to a platform approach. So the, these vertical silos, Everybody is busy like tearing them down and moving to something like where I have a, a hardware and operational layer, a platform, and then put my applications on top, which is also great for the solution vendors because then they don't need to go and worry about like putting hardware, rolling hardware, maintaining hardware, and the likes. The second thing that happens is historically people, for a particular type of job, they've chosen the hardware exactly to go and be a perfect fit. Now, if you run a versatile set of applications on top, choosing the hardware up front is very difficult. So you want to make sure that the hardware can be clustered and scales out so that we have a load of these little compute elements eventually. Though, If you need more compute, you buy another box. It's $1,000. If it doesn't work, by the way, you throw it away. You don't fix it. And um, that also comes with a third portion, like historically, yes, I've been indeed fixing things. I cube cuddle to clusters. I try to go and fix it. I try to SSH to the clusters. I did, I tried to debug. I looked at locks. Nope. How often did a uh, Apple SSH to your phone to fix it? Never. If you break it, like typically, even the Apple vendor will take it and, and offers you a new model and says, well, you can rebootstrap by pulling all the data from the cloud that you had locally on it. We're following exactly that model. So no longer imperative, but empower the device so that it can pull the state. And if it fails, it'll re-pull the state. I'm still here? OK, I'm still here. And then finally, you want to go and not move hardware every time you move a new solution. But you move the hardware once, and then you deploy many times. So these sites, like if you look at a Starbucks, how many IT people are there? Zero. So it needs to be operated by anybody. And if you ever saw, well, if the point of sale terminal at, at, at McDonald's fails, the guy opens it, flips the switch, and hopefully it reboots. Otherwise, you'll see this red and white ribbon saying broken. We treat sites and locations at cattle. So if they fail, we rebootstrap them. If they lose connectivity for a while, well, they will catch up by fetching the state. We never, ever would consider operating them as something that I need to go and treat as a pet. Because if I have a 1,000 locations, I can't really do that. All local control, central intent pulled down. And we built something based on community software. So the tool chain that we're using for observability is exactly the same tool chain that you would use in Cloud Native. So it's Prometheus-based. If you have a Prometheus client and solution, endpoint solution like AppDynamics, Grafana, or whatever, you can tap into it. You can extract the information as with any other cloud native solution. There's no special observability to solution that is just for the edge. No, we don't do anything of that. So we really maintain the cloud uh, development experience. So let me give you an example. But before giving you an example, um, let me show you 90 seconds of a little bit of inspiration, which just got finished over the weekend um, with an agency that we had. Apps at the edge can run close to you, me, everyone. And they can be here, there, everywhere. Imagine you had one solution for all your edge applications. A solution that is easier to use than your smartphone and feels familiar at first glimpse. A solution that is secure and scales as you grow within and across thousands of locations. We set out to abstract away the complexities of the edge for you, whether you're a developer or in operations. You're a cloud native engineer today. We make your transition to the edge very simple. We have built a system that is robust, secure, and horizontally scalable by reversing the classic control logic away from the cloud. Edges can now control themselves autonomously. 
Edge locations fetch their goals from the cloud and then work independently to achieve them. Network outages or low bandwidth, reinitialize a device, not a problem at all. Pre-integrated seed applications that are focused on AI ML and data management get you started fast. This is Great Bear, one platform for as many applications as you can think of. Plug and play and ready to be used in seconds with the devices and the management integrated. Join Great Bear and become Edge Native. So that's the team that built it. Um, so we are, as Guillaume said, we're a group inside Cisco, Emerging Technologies and Incubation. This thing is available, but you can't buy it. We might be able to buy it in September or October timeframe, but we're in this pre-phase of doing early field trials and the like, so you can go try it out. Um, if you go to greatbear.app, you can go and subscribe. If you go to docs.greatbear.io, you can go and get into the uh, documentation that we have. Uh, so we built this as, a, as an evolving solution that has seed apps, that has an operational layer, and that has early, a set of early devices integrated. And um, we built this platform, as I said, out of open source tools in order not to recreate a niche particular tool chain solution. So the whole thing is based on small Kubernetes clusters. The pixie dust or the, yeah, the special sauce that we put in is what we call an edge operator. And this edge operator makes sure that the cluster is maintained. It pulls state from the cloud. It even rearranges the cluster. If a worker fails, if a leader fails, it automatically repairs this overall thing. So it maintains it as a conglomerate so that we can go and say, well, we apply applications to a particular location or a site. We're not running on any particular node because even with your smartphone, do you know which particular core you're running on? For a, what application? You never ever know that, right? Um, so we abstract it the same way. So these little things, there can be thousands, and all these guys do is they reach out to a cloud-hosted SaaS service where we have one big database that you insert state into, and these guys fetch the state from that centralized database. So the operational principle is not very different from core Kubernetes. Because core Kubernetes also means API, you insert it into etcd, and then these individual sites fetch their state, or the individual workers fetch it individually. Uh, but well, for us, it's kind of going from one cluster to thousands of clusters and build a cluster of cluster solution. Northbound, you have an API. Everything is API driven. And obviously, you can bolt on your operation solution, like AppD, whatever, Grafana. Uh, and we have a dashboard that we can go and bolt onto. In order to give you a little bit of a glimpse of how that looks like, let me go and show you another short video where we jointly go through of a deployment of a simple application, and simple applications would run on sites, as we learned, and sites are just clusters or groups of small computers, these little things. So we're going to go and define a site, we're going to add a node to that particular site and then deploy the most simple application that you can ever dream of. What is this? It's something like ping, like simple echo, and we're going to go and deploy a simple ecosystem, uh, a simple app, uh, echo application. So diving into this thing on the dashboard, I have four sites here, and these are actually locations of team members. Team is mostly located in Europe, but one location that we don't really have here is one in Portugal, and we have one guy. Rafa living in Portugal, so I'm going to go and add a location in Lisbon, Portugal, and saying, well, that's a Cisco office in Lagoas Park. I'm going to go say, well, okay, I'm going to go and create that. And the minute I say create, this site shows up, but right now it's empty, and I need to go and put a note into this site, very much like the claiming procedure in Meraki. Use a hardware ID, claim the note, say okay. Then I suddenly see that this node pops up, and then it's bootstrapping and loading the operational environment. It's ready now, so that I can go and have this thing now reach out to the cloud and say, well, what am I supposed to go do? I'm supposed to go and deploy an application here, and this is this very simple hello application where we say hello from Graybear to Cisco Live, the access port, and then I'm just simply clicking deploy, and now I'm putting the intent into the cloud and the individual device now will reach out at regular intervals and eventually will fetch that declared state and will start to realize it. Okay, we're running now. 
And that means like I'm running, I can go and run this application and this replication is magic, right? So I HTTP to that address and we see hello from Cisco Live. Um, that's as simple as deploying stuff from an app store on your smartphone and that's the goal. Also the operational model that we have is as simple, be as simple as your smartphone or maybe even simpler um, so that anybody can run it especially also non-IT people that are typically operating these smart device edges at scale. Um, so we integrated observability like off the shelf and all you need to go and do is create a Prometheus endpoint that points to our northbound metrics API. That's it. We have an API first approach that everything that is available on the dashboard is available on the API. Um, we build a bunch of seed applications for things like ingest video from an edge and downsample it, compress it, because many people just say, well, there's too much data coming in. Um, I don't want all the data from the camera. I just want one frame every second. Simple edge use case. Well, we build it and make sure that that video stream is reliable. So in case of outages, go buffer. Uh, other people want to go and render content at the edge for simple apps like digital signage. Again, we build tools for that so that we can go and get started really quickly. Also getting started really quickly means taking a developer that is cloud native already under the edge native journey without like a lo steep learning curve. If you have a containerized application that is packaged with Helm, we can literally get you started in minutes. We have a tool, an SDK called GBR, and you do a, a GBR application create based on the existing Helm chart that gets you a template for the additional metadata that we need, like how to parameterize and how do you run at the edge. Then you modify that. You can go and validate your, app, uh, your application metadata that you inserted with GBR application validate. And then finally, you can say, well, if you're happy, you do GBR application publish, and then the whole thing pops up in the App Store. It's literally as simple as that. Well, and yeah, well, we integrated device management so that the whole thing, like, we're Cisco, right? We can't sell things without a box. Here's a box. And that means we can go and translate the edge, the, the cloud native experience all the way to the edge with little, really minimal pixie dust and keeping the simplicity of the cloud while enabling that transition, that transition from siloed solutions to one thing that really looks like a platform where you can have as many devices as you need from a kind of how much storage do you need, how much compute do you need, how much memory do you need. You just add compute elements, and the platform will make sure that, well, this is all like aggregated into one side or multiple, and then we have the operational layer, and we put stuff on top so that, well, ingesting video doesn't really become a pain, running a distributed AI model doesn't really become a pain, so we help the application developer that does stuff like smart mirrors, loss prevention, or whatever, get started really fast. And that's it. So if you want more about that, go to greatbear.app, or go to docsgreatbear.io, all the stuff is public, and uh, on the concept itself, I wrote a blog a while ago. We put samples out on DevNet uh, to go and see what it looks like, and um, with that, well, I'm open for questions. You can see me. I'm here until Friday. And we can chat more about the bear. Have a great day. Thank you. Uh, why is it called Great Bear? Uh, <laughs> so in the, originally, the code name was Alcor. Alcor is a star in the Great Bear or Ultra Mayor constellation. Some people didn't like the name Alcor because they said that that sounds like chemical or alcohol. And then we said, well, let's broaden things up. Let's go from one star to the constellation. And now, um, and then we switch from Ursa Mayor to Great Bear because that's more English. And well, that's what we're running with. Right now, it's a code name, right? So whether the product will ever be called Great Bear, I doubt it. <laughs> it's probably getting some fancy Cisco Edge uh, application platform, blah, blah, blah name. Um, but yeah, well, until now, I'm happy with the bear. <laughs> All right. Thank you.